To thee we come, O Lord, our God. Having confessed our sins to God and asking for his forgiveness, let us all recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority, vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. I, the Lord, alone probe the mind and test the heart to reveal, to reward everyone according to the merit of his deeds. My soul is to you. Your right hand holds me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now, and shall be, Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord have, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, you have put us on this earth to bear one another's burdens and to share in one another's joys. May we who call ourselves Christian so follow the way of your Son that we may die to sin and live for righteousness. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Merciful Father, as we observe the passing of our brothers, in blessed memory, Roberto Montero and Father Joseph Bain, we ask for your grace and blessing, accept them into your eternal kingdom, and bring us the consolation of always trusting in your care. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Jimmy, if you would please proclaim the word. A reading from the book of the Jeremiah the prophet. You duped me, O Lord, I let myself be duped. You are too strong for me, and you triumph. All the day I am the object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. And then it becomes like a burning fire in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. The gradual. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourself to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. 
He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, when we finish reading the Gospel, we offer a hymn to the Holy Spirit. And we do this in a form of a prayer that our minds and our hearts might be open to the wisdom and to the love of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters. St. Paul, in today's second reading, in his letter to the Romans, speaks of offering ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Now the definition of the word sacrifice is defined as follows. It is an act of offering to a deity something precious. Sacrifice is defined as the destruction or surrender of something for the sake of something else. And the third definition for sacrifice is something that is given up or lost, such as a parent who sacrifices something for the sake of their children. The first definition, I think and believe, meets the parameters set by St. Paul in his letter to the Romans. He calls upon all Christians to offer their bodies as a living sacrifice unto God. The definition of sacrifice is offering to God something precious. And what would be so precious? I think the most precious thing that we can give unto God is ourselves. Does not Jesus in today's gospel speak about denying oneself? You know, most of us consider our lives precious. 
Even though as we get older, there are more aches and pains in our quality of life, if you are 60, 70, 80 plus, are not the same as when we were 20, in our 20s or 30s. I think as we get older, we become more set in our ways, and it's hard to give up and deny oneself. The second definition of the word sacrifice is defined as the destruction or surrender of something for the sake of something else. I would say in Christian terminology, the destruction is oneself. I believe that when you turn your life over to God, you begin to think differently, your priorities change, and you begin to act differently. I believe that this is the benchmark of being renewed, transformed, or born again, as Jesus said to Nicodemus in the Gospel of John chapter 3. I say to you, if you are the same today as you were before you asked the Lord to come into your life and make him your personal Savior, you have not made the sacrifice. If you are arrogant, self-centered, self-righteous, judgmental towards others, or selfish, then you have, as I would say, missed the boat. Consider Paul, a persecutor of the church, and what he became. Consider how he was changed after meeting Jesus on the road to Damascus. Do we not understand what Paul said in today's reading? Do not be conformed or do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The third definition of sacrifice is to give something up. What do you think Jesus was talking about when he speaks about putting a new patch on an old piece of cloth? Or putting new wine into an old wineskin? Jesus is telling us that this will not work. As a true parent will sacrifice and give up their own personal desires and wants for their children? Is it any different than what we are called upon by our Lord for the sake of peace found in Christ, both now and to come? As parents and fellow Christians, our main goal is not getting what we want. In the light of considering the parameters of the word sacrifice, let us reread the words of Jesus as found in today's Gospel. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself or herself, take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. You know, denying oneself is not as bad as some would think in what we will gain. Did not Paul consider everything else as rubbish or in another translation as dung? We all know what dung is. 
It is what comes out of the south side of an animal. Do you remember how Jesus taught that the kingdom of God was likened unto a treasure that a man found in a field and sold everything for the sake of that treasure? Do you remember how Jesus taught that the kingdom of God was likened unto a man that found a great pearl and sold everything to possess that pearl? So the question that is asked of each of us today, what profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Or what can one exchange for their life? I believe that to deny oneself and take up one's cross and follow the way to Jesus is the path of true joy, peace, and understanding. May we not be conformed to our old way of thinking or to the standards of the world in all its skepticism and division. May we all be transformed by the renewal of our minds and attitudes and learn that we need to discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. I conclude this morning's reflections and homily on the words of St. Paul to the church at Philippi. For a moment, I want you to think that you are a member of the church of Philippi and that Paul has sent a letter to you addressing all of you as Christians. He writes, but whatever were gains for me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, and one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. In the same way, every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. Give thanks 
unto the Lord our God. ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Therefore, we join this day with the angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our fine bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. May we pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. May we pray for all those who are suffering from the COVID variant, and give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and all health care workers. May we pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as all abused and neglected animals, and all victims of violence, both here and abroad. May we pray for peace in our world. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of those who serve in our armed forces. And Father, may we pray for all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the eternal and living and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom, May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless to accept and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At 
that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, in giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in the immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants in blessed memory, Robert Montero and Father Joseph Bain, as well as all who have gone before us and now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all the rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, so part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, uh, and following the mighty example, we say with confidence, Our
past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us who receive it. Life everlasting. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you, do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. And may it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven, and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord. Receive the body and the cross.
Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the power of this Holy Communion, may we willingly take up our cross and follow Christ, and therefore find both peace and glory. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, through this Holy Eucharist, we are united with our Lord Jesus, who rose from the dead. May our brothers in blessed memory, Robert Montero and Father Joseph Bain, be joined with you in the new Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifices offered. May the worship, our tribute of our worship, be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, <coughs> the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being. And apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life. Life through the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness. A darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him be empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word. Became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we see, have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Amen.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the souls of our late departed brothers in blessed memory, for Robert Montero, and for Father Joseph Bain, and for all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 